Welcome to our Stock Market Briefing show, where we bring you the latest and greatest from the financial world with a pinch of pizzazz. Today, we've got a mix of updates that are sure to tickle your investment fancy, so let's dive right in. First off, Asian stock markets are on the rise, thanks to some unexpectedly good news from China. Industrial output and retail sales are looking healthier than anticipated, giving investors a little spring in their step. But hold on to your hats, because we've got a week packed with central bank meetings that could shake things up. From the potential end of Japan's free money era to a slower US rate cut journey, it's going to be a roller coaster. Switching gears to the courtroom drama, a New York ruling has just made it easier for creditors to sue over missed payments on Chinese developer bonds. This could spell trouble for financially strapped bond issuers but offers a clearer path for creditors looking to get their due. Meanwhile, over in the investment world, Janice Henderson is eyeing the Greater Bay Area and Hong Kong's cash for residency scheme to boost their assets. They're betting big on the US stock markets, massive upside potential, and encouraging investors to move their cash into stocks and bonds. Lastly, we're keeping an eye on the global stage, where central bank decisions from Japan and the US could dictate the market's direction. Japan might be raising interest rates for the first time in 17 years, while the Fed's meeting could signal the future of US stocks. Amidst all this, China's economic growth shows a mixed bag with strong industrial output but lagging consumption, and investors are diversifying into markets like Vietnam and Mexico to hedge against China's economic uncertainties. So, there you have it, folks. A whirlwind tour of today's financial landscape, full of ups, downs, and everything in between. Please stay tuned for more detailed content on these stories. Global Markets Asia shares up on China data, a weight clutch of central bank meetings. Yahoo! Asian stock markets rose today, buoyed by stronger-than-expected Chinese output and retail sales. In addition, investors are bracing themselves for a week of central bank meetings, which may signal the end of free money in Japan and a slower glide path for US rate cuts. In China, industrial output in January and February climbed an annual 7% and retail sales rose 5.5% YOY. New York ruling on Chinese developer bonds clarifies creditor standing. Bloomberg. Creditors of Glory Health Industry Limited, a Chinese property developer, have been given permission by a New York state court to sue the company for missing payments on its $335 million bond. The court ruled that investors, who hold 42% via prime brokers, have standing to sue as they received approval from the note's clearing agent. This ruling could make it easier for creditors to sue financially struggling bond issuers in New York, while also offering a glimpse into Chinese developers' legal options in fending off creditors of their dollar-denominated bonds. Janice Henderson targets Greater Bay Area, Hong Kong Cash for Residency Scheme. South China Morning Post. Asset manager Janice Henderson Investors plans to tap opportunities in the Greater Bay Area, mainland China and the wider region, with a particular focus on leveraging Hong Kong's newly launched investment migration scheme. CEO Ali Dibaj says the company aims to boost assets under management in Asia from $30 billion in 2018 to $50 billion in the next five years. Janice Henderson's Hong Kong summit last week sought to promote stock and bond investments, with the CEO saying investors are currently sitting on cash, missing out on the massive upside potential in the US stock market. Asia stocks look muted ahead of Central Bank Week, markets wrap. Bloomberg. Asian stocks are set to make a mixed start to the week, with Australian equity futures pointing towards a slight loss while Japanese and Hong Kong contracts showed small gains. The Bank of Japan and the Federal Reserve will be making policy decisions this week that could shape the near-term direction of global markets. The Bank of Japan may lift its key interest rate to 0% to 0.1% on Tuesday, its first hike in 17 years. Meanwhile, the Federal Reserve's policy meeting on Wednesday may dictate the direction of global stocks for the next quarter. China's growth mixed as output jumps, consumption lags. Bloomberg. China's industrial output rose by 7% in the first two months of 2023, beating economist estimates, according to data from the National Bureau of Statistics. Retail sales were up 5.5%, in line with projections, while fixed asset investment growth accelerated to 4.2%, also stronger than expected. However, investment in property development fell 9%, and consumer and business confidence remain weighed down by an uncertain income outlook. The urban jobless rate rose to 5.3% from 5.1% at the end of 2022. Ga Capital bets on Vietnam, Mexico and US opportunities to offset China woes. South China Morning Post. Hong Kong's Ga Capital Partners is investing in Vietnam and Mexico's logistics sectors and the US artificial intelligence, AI, sector to counteract challenges to China's economic recovery. 
The trade tensions between the US and China may continue for several years, said Goodwin Ga, the firm's founder. He added that he wanted to invest in countries that benefited from China's manufacturers diversifying away from the mainland, which included Vietnam, India, and Mexico. Japan's JARA, IHI to testimonia as fuel at coal power plant. Nikkei Asia. Japan's biggest power generator, JARA, and engineering company IHI will begin testing a technology that reduces carbon emissions from coal-fired power plants by burning ammonia instead of coal from later this month. Ammonia doesn't produce carbon when burned, streamlining the process of decarbonizing existing coal-powered plants. The companies are retrofitting Jera's Hikinen power plant in preparation for tests in which 20% of the energy for one of the plant's five generators will be produced from ammonia. Jera and IHI aim to introduce the technology into regular operations by 2027. Muted Start, the Bloomberg Open, Asia Edition. Bloomberg. China's economic activity in January and February was likely mixed, with property investment expected to decline again. This could hinder Beijing's efforts to maintain GDP growth at 5% this year. Top officials have pledged increased fiscal spending and support for the electric vehicle, EV, industry. Vladimir Putin has won his fifth term as Russia's president, giving him the ability to escalate the war in Ukraine and challenge the West. Donald Trump has threatened to impose a 100% tariff on cars made in Mexico by Chinese firms. India will hold a general election starting April 19 with Prime Minister Narendra Modi's BJP seeking a third term. China's Gen Z is investing in gold as a safe investment amid economic uncertainty. CF man accused of stabbing victim multiple times appears in court. Yahoo! The attorney for a man charged with attempted first-degree intentional homicide is reviewing the initial police interrogation. Abraham Sanchez Galicia is accused of repeatedly stabbing a person in the neck with a broken beer bottle in May 2023. He is also charged with mayhem and first-degree reckless injury. Sanchez Galicia appeared in court via video from jail. His attorney is reviewing the initial police interrogation as part of his defense strategy. The defense attorney is looking for any evidence that may help his client's case. Sanchez Galicia is currently being held on a $1 million cash bond. Uber pays $178 million to end legal fight with Australian taxi drivers. Associated Press. Uber has agreed to pay $272 million Australian dollars, $178 million to settle a class action lawsuit brought against it by Australian taxi and hire car drivers. The case, which was due to go to court on Monday, was brought by Maurice Blackburn lawyers on behalf of 8,000 drivers who it said had suffered financial losses as a result of Uber's entry into the Australian market in 2012. Uber has described the lawsuit as relating to legacy issues and said the settlement would put them firmly in our past. It added that it had already made contributions to state-level taxi compensation schemes since 2018. Japan's wage hikes create game-changing inflation dynamic as BOJ meets. Nikkei Asia. The Bank of Japan, BOJ, has hinted at the possibility of raising interest rates for the first time since 2007. The news comes as Japanese corporations have promised record pay rises as inflation and nominal wage growth finally increase. The BOJ has reportedly started coordinating internally and externally to end its negative rate policy, which it adopted in February 2016. ASX set to fall as iron ore drops below 100 US dollars a ton, while ST slips. ABC. The ASX is expected to drop due to falling iron ore prices and a decline on Wall Street. China's economy is also struggling, which is impacting the iron ore market. Australia set to extend rate pause as economy enters slow lane. Bloomberg. The Reserve Bank of Australia, RBA, is expected to hold interest rates steady at 4.35% for a third consecutive meeting, as the economy slows and unemployment trends higher. The RBA is likely to maintain a hawkish bias due to concerns over a disinflationary impulse. The decision will be released on April 2, followed by a press conference an hour later. Economists expect the RBA to maintain a hawkish stance due to sticky inflation and a hot property market. The RBA's policy announcement will come after a potential rate hike by the Bank of Japan on April 1. Japan's stock market rally can outlast negative interest rates. Nikkei Asia. The Japanese stock market has been performing exceptionally well, with the Nikkei stock average up 28% in 2023, making it the best-performing market in Asia. Despite this, valuations still look attractive, and almost half of the companies in the Tokyo Stock Exchange's prime section trade below book value. Japan is undergoing a structural transformation, with corporate governance reforms and ongoing government initiatives to improve productivity. The government is also encouraging retail investors to invest in equities.
With lower for longer interest rates and ongoing reforms, Japanese equities offer a compelling investment case. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6DoBrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO brief via email.